Hello everybody, in today's video I am going to talk about how to look after your finished embroideries. My name is Sarah, this is my channel Sarah Humphrey Embroidery, welcome to this video. So I spend a lot of time showing you how to do embroidery, <laughs> um, but we haven't really looked at what to do when you have finished your embroideries and how you can look after them. So I've got lots of things on the table to show you, I'm going to use some pieces of my own and some pieces from my collection. I'm going to look about uh, what can cause damage and what can happen to your embroideries and a little look about what you can do to prevent it and prolong the life of them. So the first thing that I want to mention really is good working practices. If you start as you mean to go on, there will be fewer problems down the line. So there's a couple of things that I think are worth doing, um, thinking about before you start your embroideries. The first one is one I go on a lot about, and that is ironing your fabric. Um, I hate seeing it when people have done this beautiful embroidery on on. Um, piece of fabric and they just didn't iron it and it's got a great big crease down the middle but there is a practical reason for doing that and I will talk about that a little bit more later so if you don't have an iron a lot of people go I well, don't have an iron go and get yourself an iron <laughs> not very expensive um, and iron your fabric first so the second thing is to keep your threads in good condition as well so keep them stored out of the sunlight keep them somewhere they're not going to get the dust on them and where the temperature doesn't change too much and if you check out this video up here this is a little guide to mine of mine about how you can store your embroidery stash and some different methods that you can use to keep your items um, nice and clean and safe and tidy so I want to mention needles as well. Try and refresh your needles quite often. I'm a little bit guilty of this myself. Change your needles. They're not expensive things um, and they will tarnish the more you use them and they get bent and they get blunt as well. So use nice fresh needles for your embroidery and that will also help later on. So once you've finished the stitching on your beautiful embroidery, do consider how you finish the embroidery so you could frame it in a frame to put it on the wall. And once you have done that, if you don't want to put it on the wall, you might want to put it somewhere safe. So do think about storage. Where are you going to store your finished embroideries? So let's have a look at what can happen to your embroidery. So the first thing I want to talk about is touching it. Obviously, to make your embroidery, you have to touch it. You have to touch your threads in order to stitch with it. Um, and when I did the apprenticeship at the Royal School of Needlework, they were really hot on this. It was cover everything up that you weren't working on. Don't stroke the threads and the fabric, <laughs> and the fabric when you're stitching it. As, as tactile as it is and as much as you want to do that, um, try to avoid touching it as much as possible because every time you do that, you will wear the threads a little bit more and the oils in your hands will have an effect on the threads as well. So if you can avoid touching it, any more than you have to to make it that will help to preserve your threads and your fabrics. If you've been watching my videos recently you will see I'm doing quite a lot of slow stitching which is all about that connection with the fabrics and touching and feeling them so I would say sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes it isn't perhaps if you're doing gold work you don't want to do that because you'll tarnish your gold work threads so it's about knowing when you can and when you can't um, so some techniques just maybe don't touch it any more than you need to um, while you're stitching it. Now, if you're going to make something to actually use, you need to think about this. I just want to bring this little phone case in here. I made this a good while ago now. It's had a lot of use um, in the days when a phone would <laughs> fit in that size. And you can see what's happened to it here. So it's got lots of different materials on it and how they have worn. So this is velvet here and you can see the piles lost its sort of colour on the top. It is really looking quite faded. This silk here is starting to disintegrate. The threads are actually rotting there. This little bit of gold lame fabric um, is really quite delicate and has come away from the seam as well. Um, and that join there, it's peeling away from the join. So you can see what would happen when you use things a lot. Different fabrics will wear in different ways um, and the seams will often wear as well. The top's going to here. And it's obviously been in and out of a bag lot. It's had a lot of wear and tear this. So you may want to think about the the materials that you use if you're going to use something as practical as this cushions as well um, and church kneelers I want to mention um, church kneelers when you make them you actually do an extra stitch so it's called tramming and you put lines of a thread underneath and you stitch over the top of the lines of the thread and that makes it a lot thicker and a lot um, more durable so that when you're kneeling on it and lots of people kneeling on it getting down and getting up again um, and it doesn't wear quite so quickly they still wear out but it's supposed to be a technique to make it more durable so if you're going to stitch something to use just have that in mind when you're making your project 
So we're talking about wear and tear. If you're not going to work on something for a while, do consider taking it out of the frame. So ring frames can bruise the fabric um, where the two frames go together. Even if you bind them, it can still do that. You're pulling it really tightly and it actually damages the fabric. So pop it out of the ring frame um, to store it. And then when you want to stitch on it, you can put it back in the ring frame. And I want to show you this one because this is the car ultimate card <laughs> and I did it and I'm going to admit to it and show you. And this is what happens if you're putting it on some stretcher bars and you pin it and you don't take it off to stretcher bars and the pins go rusty in here. They get a little bit damp um, or they're just in so long and you might have done it with, with dressmaking. You haven't finished some item off your making. You've pinned it and the pins go rusty in the fabric. So this is what happens and it's quite drastic and it's getting worse as well. These spots are getting worse. I've obviously taken it off the frame now, but they're still worse. And I was really pleased with this piece I did and I basically have wrecked it because I didn't take it off the frame while I was considering what to do with it. Um, so you can see where I folded it so I can make it smaller and I can put those bits around the back, but it's not the same piece I had originally planned I like this space around it um, so I could either embrace the rusty bits and I could sew some more sequins over it but they will get worse and there will be holes eventually and I can't treat these ones I can't wash these ones out because the background is watercolour paint and that will come out if I wash it so I really need to probably cut that off and reframe it or repurpose it into something else which I'm thinking about so if you're sitting watching this and you know you've got something on a frame and it's been on there a long time pause the video <laughs> Go and find it, take it off the frame and then come back and watch the rest. So other things can happen that will damage your fabric and your threads. Um, there's a couple I want to talk about now. And one is sun damage and what happens if you leave something in the sun. So if you framed your finished piece, you put it up on a wall and the sun comes in in the morning and hits it every morning, it can have quite bad results. So I just want to show you this bit of fabric. Um, this is a curtain from my studio and I took them down to wash them the other day and they literally fell apart in my hands and the sun hits the front of our studio for a good portion of the day and these are hanging in the window and this is purely sun damage and it's really fragile just it just rips so easily it's absolutely disintegrating this is just a cotton as well and you can see the seams have all gone as well and that's just for it sitting there in the sun they've been up for a while um so that is what can happen and I'll show you a couple of other pieces as well. This is one I bought recently. I just thought it was lovely, but it is so fragile. And this is silk on here. And you can see how the silk's disintegrated. So silk fabric and threads can have a very short life if you don't look after them. The sun especially will do that if you've got damp atmosphere, if you live in a humid place. And obviously this pin cushion has been used as well. So we've got two things going on here. We've got the actual use of the pins going in and out and it being handled and this damage to the silk as well. And you can just see where it's all going rotten. The things that aren't silk are in pretty good condition here. Put it down as a bit of velvet which is actually okay as well so anything that silk is just rotted um, and everything else is fine so do consider the materials you use some things will be worse than others and I just want to show you one more piece so this is a little purse we had a little look at this in a patreon and channel members video we had a closer look at this but you can see what's happened to the inside so this is the inside pocket of the purse and again it's silk and there's not a massive amount of it left in some places, just gone completely rotten here. And it will have a natural life of its own anyway. Um, but if you don't store it correctly, it will um, hasten the end of its life, basically. So the stitching on the front is pretty good, pretty solid stitching. But then this silk lining has disintegrated. So just something to think about if you're going to use a material like this. So it's not just the fabric, um, the silk fabric that can rot, the threads can rot as well. So I wanted to show you this, but I can't get it out of the packing. I got it out yesterday to have a look at it and it all fell apart and bits fell off it. So I will put some pictures up of it instead. I did take the opportunity to photograph and it's a, basically a Nilo. It's a cover for a big long Nilo, like a footstool and it's got this beautiful beadwork on it. So it's a canvas background, canvas stitches. So it's wool on a canvas um, and it's been decorated with these 
um, beaded roses and these beads are just falling off at the rate of knots and I got this out on the table it's the size of this table and the beads were just coming off and the whole thing was a bit dirty and it was just not, not a nice thing and I thought I can't keep getting this out um, I've got all the beads that came out of it so I am saved all the beads if I wanted to restore it or to conserve it um, so if you're sewing something like beads on, do use something really strong. We have modern threads today with polyester in them. They are super strong threads. Double the thread up for extra security. If one thread breaks, it's still got another one holding it in. So do think about that when you're adding things on, when you're embellishing with beads and sequins um, and shisha mirrors as well. You might often see shisha, something with shisha mirrors on and if they're not sewn on properly, the shisha mirrors just fall out straight away. So think about when you're attaching something, secure it as best as you can with as strong a material as possible. So the other thing I want to mention on this subject is moths. <laughs> moths and wool. If you're a knitter, this might be something you know a lot about. Um, so I did have um, a project I was working on and I was using our Lana threads, our Burma Lana threads from our range, which are 50% wool in them, 50% acrylic, 50% wool. And I got a skein out and I unraveled a bit of thread and I only had a little short length, thought that's a bit strange, unraveled a bit more and the same and the moths had got to it. A moth had gotten there and it eaten the woolen part, <laughs> the acrylic part, and I couldn't use it. So do think about how you store your woolen threads um, so that that doesn't happen. Now, if it does happen with your threads, you can put them in the freezer, put them in a bag, put them in the freezer, it will kill off the moth um, and then it won't get any worse and then put them in something that's sealed. So what I quite like to do is to put them in these little um, <clears throat> organza bags so they can still breathe because if you put them in plastic and it, it was a little bit humid you're going to get some moisture in there so they can still breathe in these bags but the moths can't get in more importantly so I learned that one the hard way so if you've got some woolen threads do consider just putting them in something that will protect them and I just want to show you what's happened to one of my pieces and how the moths have gotten to it so this is my Tudor Rose gold work. So this was the first piece of gold work I did on my apprenticeship and we learnt these gold work techniques. So we worked just part of it and I'll put it under this camera so that you can see it clearly. And we just worked these sections of it so you could see the pro process of how it was made, which means that some of the felt padding that goes underneath the gold work has been left exposed. And I hope you can see this here, but the little moths have got to it here <laughs> and they've eaten it and you can just see this wool just disintegrating a little bit here there's another one here that goes right back to the linen underneath so the moths have got to this one so if you're not covering it up for whatever reason you might just be using felt in your work it's a nice material to use but it is wool it will get eaten if the moths get to it so you do need to protect it and to think about that so we've mentioned gold work so let's talk about tarnishing because this is just something that goes with gold work and something that will probably happen. So it only happens with things that have got a percentage of gold in them. So something with a, a gilt or an actual 2% gold thread. And because it's not 100% gold and there are other metals in there and they will tarnish. So um, with moisture in the air mainly or oils in your hands. So if you handle the gold, so I'm just going to show you some that has tarnished. So this is a bright check. You can see, let me get it out of the the bag and you can see that that's gone quite a coppery colour it should be a beautiful shiny gold and there's some dark coppery bits in there it looks quite beautiful <laughs> but you would probably be used copper if you wanted copper so um, that's some bright check and what can happen to that the pearl pearl is quite spectacular you can see here it's almost gone black it's gone very dark brown on the edge there um, and it's just all throughout this has gone a funny colour and it's quite beautiful and you can use it in its own right I've got some pieces of tarnish that might put in some slow stitching maybe um, but yeah if you're doing a beautiful gold piece this is what will happen to it you can't stop this process um, you can slow it down by not handling the gold so much and protecting it once it's finished but it this will happen and um, you can't clean it either um, once it's stitched down you've got fabrics and threads to think about you can't put you can't put a cleaner <laughs> on this it won't work so my suggestion is just to embrace the tarnishing 
it's part of the beauty of gold work and if you look at old pieces of gold work really old pieces this is what you will see it won't be beautiful and shiny and you have to use your imagination a bit to imagine what it would look like so embrace the tarnishing is what i would say there's a little bit of rococo as well so the pearl pearl is completely metal so all of that will tarnish where the rococo is a metal wrap around a core thread but this one has gone quite spectacularly as well you can see how brown it's gone here how dark it's gone so that will happen so you need to embrace that process what you can do to slow that tarnishing down is to store your gold threads now you can see i've just taken those out of a plastic bag not a good idea you can get these acid free bags we do have these in the shop and you can store them in these and these will help to protect them just fold the end over a couple of times seal that up and that will help to delay that tarnishing process so definitely put your gold threads in some of these if you've got some and I'm just going to um, show you this here so this is my coronation gold so I stitched this in 2005 I think and it's been behind glass so putting it behind glass will help to slow that tarnishing down and out of the sunlight again but it is tarnishing quite a lot now um, it's gone um, with some of the specific threads have tarnished more than others so some bits look quite gold and some some bits are, are definitely not gold anymore so it will happen with it but just embrace it that's just part of gold work so let's talk about rusty spots so if you've ever seen any vintage fabrics or any vintage table linens or things like that you will have seen these little brown spots on them it is actually rust and um, once the rust is in the fabric, it is going to keep rusting. So um, I'm going to show you this little piece I've got here. So this is a little sort of white work top. It's got some beautiful lace on it. It's really delicate, but hopefully you can see these little spots on it. So this is this is rust here. And this can happen um, from water or from moisture. So if you had ironed this and you had sprayed it with some water and you use the water out of the tap and you live in a hard water area it can come from things like that and once it's in there it's just going to be worse and eventually it will make a hole in it now you can wash things like this it's a very technical process and it's really you're going along the conservation process i'm not an expert in this so i'm not going to go into this in detail we did a little bit of this on the royal school of needle apprenticeship we did a studio modules on cleaning things and there's chemicals and things that you can use to get rid of the rust ferrosolve i think was one i will put a link below because you can get a little kit for how to do that but you can't do that on colored fabrics and things with embroidery so it's only really on clothing on on white undyed fabrics um if you google it there's lots of <laughs> lots of people with lots of ideas on how you get rust spots out but again I think really it's not on your embroideries it's on things like um, clothing and linens and things like that there's lots of Wardian recipes and stuff so if you're going to go down that route just try it on something first um, because you don't want to wreck your embroidery so um, again just think about um, what you do beforehand to prevent the rust spots so if you're going to iron put deionized water in your iron you spray that and you can um and you can then iron it with the deionized water and if you put it in the washing machine the same thing's going to happen so think about a softener in the water so just think about what happens beforehand now if you see my other channel sarah humphrey creates i'm going to go completely against what i've just said because you might have seen a video on there where i'm purposely dying things with rusty objects so I'm going to pull these in now because I want to show you these so I've made a little this little needle case here and I just dyed some fabrics I had fun, fun playing with some fabrics in tea um, and with rusty nails now the tea is quite acidic and will have the same effect so if you um, were wearing some white linen and you spilt tea on it if you don't get the tea out it will have the same effect as the rust and it'll start rotting the fabric so it's quite abrasive stuff tea if you're a tea drinker <laughs> um, but I purposely wanted to play with that here and I know that this isn't going to last and again there's lots of people I'll show you this little bit here because this is it's quite amazing what you can do with it it's really beautiful but this is just pure rust on here this is just going to rot it's going to keep rotting and there's lots of people online who say oh you can slow it down by doing this and dipping it in vinegar and putting it in salt and whatever and um, once the rust's in the fabric it won't it'll keep going um, but I'm quite interested in that I'm quite interested in that things don't last forever and we try and make things last forever and we protect them as much as we can because we put a lot of work into them but this is just something I'm playing with at the moment 
which I think is quite interesting. Um, the little needle case, the little book cover you might have seen in those videos as well. Talk about how to make that little book cover, show you the process of that, and you can see all this rusty stuff in it here. <laughs> Um, and check out the video if you want to know how to do this but don't put these things with your other embroideries the rust will come from this piece and it'll go on to the other piece and then you, you don't want that and this little bit I've just put in a bag so these were pins I actually put through the fabric and I sprayed them with vinegar and with water and the pins have rusted in the fabric so you could see what happens if you leave them on the frame or you leave your needles your needles in as well not just your pins if you leave your needles in the fabric this can happen so um, it is a fun technique to play with um, if you want to have rusty bits you can make them rusty if you don't there's other things you can do to help prevent it and I will make sure these are separate and not with my other pieces of embroidery so let's have a little look at how to store your embroideries if you're not going to frame them or if you've not quite finished them or something like that so I bought this very recently a little sale that I went to is a lovely piece of Jacobi and I'll open it up it's a beautiful little table runner kind of thing I guess but it came like this this is how it was on the table and it was folded up like this and I just want to show you what's happened where it's been folded so right on the fold this fabric has just got holes in it. It's just worn away and it's rotted. And this is especially so with linen. Linen has a very short staple and you will know if you've got any linen clothes how hard they are to iron. Once those fibres are bent, they're damaged and it's very hard to get them flat again. And this is what's happened if I just open it out. All of the damage on this is where the creases are. So it's been folded down the middle this way. So here's the hole, another one here. There's some damage here. It's not quite a hole yet, but it's heading that way, definitely. And then it goes down here. This stitching is also coming undone. This stitching's in quite good condition over the rest of it, but just where it's been folded, you can just see that this thread is damaged as well. There's another hole here. And they tried to repair this one here and done some darning on it as well. So if you fold your fabrics, this is what can happen with it. So I'm going to show you what to do um, to avoid um, getting this sort of damage on your material. So if you're not going to frame it and put it on the wall and you want to store it and it's a little bit bigger just to lay flat, we can do this method here. So I've got my little um cacti that i've done here's my little cacti project we have a video on these if you want to know how to stitch these it's quite cute and i thought this has been sitting in a drawer for a long time you can see a crease down it already so i thought this would be a good one to to roll up and to to store properly so what i'm going to do is use some acid free tissue paper which we also have in the shop um, and this will just help to protect the fabric um a little bit while you store it um it's it's acid free so it won't hopefully get those little iron spots in it that we've been talking about and i'm going to roll it around the inside of a kitchen no that's not kitchen roll that's like a tin foil um greaseproof paper something like that something from the kitchen so quite a nice sturdy roll that goes inside um i don't want this to touch the fabric because this probably isn't acid free so i'm going to wrap this in a piece of the acid free tissue and then roll it up roll the fabric up in it so let's do that first so i've got two pieces here so i'm going to use one to wrap around here and one to wrap the final thing in so i'm just going to put it in the middle and roll the tissue around the inner And then you can just push the ends inside the tube and that will protect the embroidery from anything that's in the cardboard tube so then i'm going to put the other piece out on the table and i'm going to roll my piece of embroidery now what might be quite surprising at this point is the way that i roll it so we're going to put the stitching the, the finished stitching that's on the top on the outside and we're going to roll it so the stitching is on the outside now that might be a little bit um counterintuitive shall we say but what happens is on the back the stitches are longer on the back than they are on the front generally and if I roll it to the outside those stitches on the back they stretch and then they break on the back and then if they come out on the back they could come out on the front so it's better to do it the other way round so I'm actually going to roll it 
with the embroidery on the outside. So just place that under there. I've got my tissue protecting my roll. You can see that stitching there. And that's nice and protected. It's in the layers of the acid-free tissue paper and it's going to be nice and secure from anything that might want to attack it. Now I also suggest that maybe you do that with your embroidery fabrics. You don't need to put it in the tissue paper but definitely um, take it out. So these are some linens from our shop. So you take them out of the sleeves when you get them and iron them with your deionized water. And then you could roll them around a roll that I have also covered in the acid tea free tissue paper. And you could roll some again around the outside if you want. But store them like that so they're ready to use. Because if you leave them folded like this, then those creases um, will damage the linen fibres, as I've already shown you with that Jacobean piece. So definitely when you get your fabrics you want to stitch on, just prepare them ready. Um, get them iron, get the creases out, then roll them up and they're ready to use. If you've got something that won't roll... So these pieces here, so this is a little project that we did. So different ways of doing some lettering. So this has got some gold in it. It's got some beads on it. It's got some cabochons on it. So this little thing here. So that's not going to roll so easily. And I've got this little sampler I did as well, which has got loads of different metals on it. It's got spangles. It's got shisha mirrors. Got these great big metal coins on it as well so that one is quite hard to roll as well so anything that won't roll you need to store flat um, I will show you how you can do that at the end but again use your tissue paper you can layer it in the tissue paper and keep them nice and flat um, in something to protect them you can get acid free boxes archival boxes if you've got loads of stuff and you really want to to secure it for future generations you could think about going down that route as well so we've talked a little bit about how to store your items. I just want to talk about framing briefly um, because framing something is definitely the best way to protect it. So this is a piece I made a long time ago, probably about 2005. And I taught this for my lovely ladies from Portland. Hello to you if you're watching. Um, this is Henry VIII's Pond Garden we did. And it's just got some gold in it, which is why I wanted to show you this. So we've got a little bit of that pearl pearl in and some bright check as well. And a bit of pearl pearl around the middle. And this has been in this frame pretty much since then, I think. It's got glass over it. The glass isn't touching the embroidery. It's off the embroidery. So you need a sort of deep framed um frame if you can get one so that they don't touch and the glass doesn't touch the embroidery and it's in pretty good condition this gold has gone a little bit brown but not really anything like what i've shown you in those packets before so putting it in the frame has definitely helped to um to prolong its life to stop it tarnishing and it's also been hung on the wall it's been in the same place it's out of the the cold it's not got extreme temperatures happening to it so it's definitely made a difference keeping it in the frame and this one up here it's been sitting up here my little e little gold work e and this doesn't have any glass on it so it's been in the frame but there's nothing protecting it so the dust is getting on it the gold is not tarnishing yet um, but this is a lot more recent than that one that I have just shown you. But by not having it covered, this is definitely going to tarnish sooner. It's going to get the dust on it as well, which is quite hard to get off in embroidery. So think about if you're framing it, definitely having some glass over the top. Again, you can get special glass, conservation glass that stops the UV light getting through. So if you've made something really, really special, really special heirloom you want to protect, you could consider that as well. So um, do consider framing and do consider glass over your piece as well. So I mentioned wrapping in tissue paper. So this is how I store most of my things. I've got well over 350 pieces of embroidery. I can't have them all on the wall. I don't live in a house anywhere near big enough for that. So I store them like this in, I've got special drawers for each of them. And I just make a little bag out of that acid free tissue paper. So this is my silk shaded sweet piece. So this is they here. And then made this little bag folded it over and stuck it down and made a bag put a label on it because I end up with a lot of white bags and I don't know what's in it um, and that will help to protect it and I just want to show you as well although this isn't in a frame with glass on it I put it in a flexi frame one of our flexi frames but I have just finished it on the back as well so I just put a little bit of felt on the back and sewn that on and what that does is it stops any little 
bugs and any little mites and any little moths getting into the back of it. Um, I have seen things when I worked in the studio at the RSN and you get something coming and it needed cleaning and you take the backing, well, you take it out the frame or, or turn it over and it would just have little bugs fall out of it. It was really horrible. I didn't like doing that. So if you can put something over the back as well, that will just help to protect it too. And then you can just slip it in the little bag. And that can go away again somewhere out of the sunlight and out of anywhere where there's moisture. And then I just want to show you these and what happens if you don't look after them and you don't store them correctly. So these are some little embroidered postcards I got. You might have seen these before. These are little World War One postcards that they would send home to their loved ones. And this one I bought like this. So it's been in this envelope. This is the original envelope. Been in some paper. I don't think they're acid this one might be acid free, but I don't think that one is. But they've been kept in here and they've not been used and they're in really good condition. You know, these are a, over 100 years old, probably about 100 years old now. And they're made of silk. They've got silk threads and the condition of these is absolutely perfect. They've not been handled a lot. They've not been used. It's got a little card in it says happy birthday. that's not been written on. So they have not been touched, not been handled. And they're both in really beautiful condition is another one there and thinking of you it's so beautiful um, and they're so delicate as well and they're just in fabulous condition because they've not been touched they've been kept in there and been looked after and then these ones let me just put that back in there these ones have not <laughs> been looked after and they've probably been touched so I'm just going to get them they came in this thing and I should really take them out and wrap them up and I will do that. So I'll just take a couple. There's another one there and one on the front there. But you can see what's happened to these. So again, they haven't been written on or anything. That looks like it's originally there, but look how this is disintegrated now. The stitching has all gone around the edge completely. Um, point with that. And this silk is rotten and falling out. So this has either been left somewhere damp or it's been handled or... Um, been out in the in the UV light, been out in the sunlight, um, and it is quite damaged. And this one as well, the stitching's not so bad on this one. But, well, actually, it is. Well, the stitching's okay, but that backing fabric has gone completely rotten. And can you see all these little spots, these little brown spots? This is all um, rust. This is all iron, iron mould on it, um, and in the cardboard as well. So that's probably not acid free. So that's in quite bad condition. I can't really stop that. I could wrap it up in tissue paper and just um, keep it nice and safe from now on. But just to show you the difference between something that's been looked after well and something that happened and what can happen if you don't do that. So I hope you found that useful and you've got some ideas about how you can protect your work and you can look after your work. If you're interested to see those ideas on how to store your stash, you can check out this video up here. And then if you want to see how I made these um, projects and this tea dyed, rusty dyed fabric, you can check out my Sarah Humphrey Create channel down here. And if you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up as always, and I will see you next time.